In this presentation, we're going to record transactions related to standard types of expenses within our not-for-profit organizations, things like the telephone expense and the utilities expense. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. We're going to go on over to Excel to see what our objective will be. So here we are in Excel. We're going to be recording transactions related to those standard kind of expenses. We'll start off with the telephone expense. We're going to go to the printing and postage, utilities, and so on and so forth. So these will be standard in terms of similar to a for-profit organization in form, the type of transaction we're going to have in terms of the accounts, decreasing the cash accounts, the other side going to typically an expensive count. Now also note that we're going to have this information broken out as it would normally be broken out in a for profit by uh, by the nature of the transaction, the expense categories being like things like rent expense, salaries expense, and so on and so forth. But we're also going to want to then break them out by what they're used for their function, including the programs, education, community service for us, admin type ex expenses and fundraising. So we're going to do this in a two-step process, and this is this is what I would recommend if you for normal bookkeeping, right? Do the normal bookkeeping, enter it just like you would for a for-profit, record the expenses by their nature as you normally would, rent expense, telephone, and so on, and then go back in as we'll do later, and then reallocate all of them in accordance with your percentages, which is going to be 20, uh, 40, 20, 20, 20 for us. And so we'll do that in a future presentation. You'll specialize your tasks that way, you can make the data input whoever does the data input for the expenses can, can not doesn't need to know as much to do that and uh, probably a little bit faster to do that way so we're going to do the first half then just entering the normal types of transactions with the natural categorization here all right so let's go on back over we're going to go back into uh, zero we're going to select the old plus drop down here and be picking the spend money we're going to be spending money for the expenses related to the not for profit organization we're spending money out of the checking account, so we're going to take it out of the normal checking account. First one's going to be the telephone bill, which we're going to say we pay Verizon. We do our telephone with Verizon, although we've been offered a very nice deal from AT&T, and we're thinking about switching up just for that time period. But in any case, we won't get into that. We're going to bring this on back to January. This is going to be January 30th. We're going to say we're doing these as pretty much the end of the month, January 30th, that we will enter this as of. We're going to say we could put the period of the of the phone, right? We could put like the period covered or something like that. But the vendor pretty much says most of what we need to, to say here. So I'm just going to keep it blank. We're going to then put the amount. The amount is going to be for the 6200. So we're going to say here the amount of 6200. The account, something like telephone, should be here. Let's see if we have an account for the telephone. Scrolling down. See if they gave us a telephone expense type of account don't have it it's interesting i was i was guessing we would have had that one so that's not a problem or anything just thought we might have one if i type in here telephone nope okay so what's the account number that we're going to want something like let's make it uh 6220 for the number then i'm going to add the account up top so let's add the account and i'm going to say code 6220 then the type is just going to be a normal expense type of transaction. So normal expense transaction. And then the name, I'm going to say telephone. And there we have it. So that looks good. Let's go ahead and save that. And there it is. So I'm not going to put it into restricted or unrestricted categorization. It will later go into the unrestricted and we'll break it out by the 20, 20, 20, 40 breakout here. However, I'm going to leave it uncategorized for now, which means it'll show up in the uncategorized category, making it easy for us to then go in all at once at a later point, going into those uncategorized categories and then categorizing them. So this is going to decrease the cash account. Other side, go into the telephone company. Let's go save and another. So we're going to say, thank you for the form. Let's, can we have another? And we're going to go back on over here and I'm going to, now I'm going to highlight the ones that we're working on green or at least i'll highlight like the last one will be green we're working on the last green one that's the rule the last green one that's the one we're working on so now we're going to go to the printing and uh, postage expense so let's say all right printing and postage let's just say we're getting this from the post office i'm just gonna make up a vendor here and we'll make this as of the end of the year uh january 30th bring this on back to the january 30th as well 
and we could put a description now note that once we have the vendor set up just like in a for-profit organization the second month of operations will be a little bit e office both office I'm missing an e here okay now I had set up two vendors okay I'm not gonna so I in the second month of operations it the vendors will be set up and it'll help us out a little bit so it'll be easier for the second month of operations just like a for-profit where zero will memorize some of the transactions and help us out with the transaction. Of course, just like a for-profit, we do want to have consistency. So the same vendors should typically be going to the same accounts for the most part, general rule. So printing and postage expense. Do we have a printing and postage expense? Uh, let's put the amount first. That's what I want to do. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's do 129900. And then we're looking for the printing and postage expense. Do we have printing and postage? I don't think so. We've probably got office expense here. But let's make another category. We want to categorize the printing and postage. So let's go to the 6230. Let's go 6230. I'm going to go back up top, make another code, and we're going to call it 6230. And we're going to say the name is going to be printing and postage I think that's how you spell postage I hope if not I apologize but I'm gonna keep it as is I didn't have a red line under it so that's good and then I'm gonna go down to the expense it's gonna be an expense type of account expense type of account code 6230 printing and postage name let's save that we're gonna go ahead and save that one this one will be decreasing the cash account by that 12,900 other side going to the expense printing and postage not being categorized in terms of the categorization we will do that later as we went through last time let's go ahead and say save and thank you let's have another and then go back on over to the, what the next one's going to be utilities so i'm going to make this one green so the general rule here is we're working on the last green one the last green one is the one we're on so i don't have to make this one blue because we're working on the last green one that's the rule okay so then we're going to go back on over Utilities, we're going to say this is our Edison, is the vendor, Edison, Edison is the vendor for the utilities. Let's bring this on back to January again. So we'll bring it on back to January 30th. January 30th. All right, that's going to be the Edison Telephone Company. We're going to say the amount then is going to be four. Back to Excel the 9100 so 9100 then the account i typically would put this in the utilities account but note you have some leeway you could you could put this uh breaking it out just to uh, uh, an electric bill if you want to break out i would typically put like the utilities including gas and electric in the utilities but some people would put phone in the utilities so so really on the expense side of things your question is how much detail do I want on the expense uh, side of things? There's going to be some kind of standardization, but there's also some, some deviation from the standardization. And so it really depends on the industry. You have some flexibility there. Let's make up another account. It's going to be 62. Let's make it 6240. I don't see a utilities account, so I'm going to add one. So I'm going to say the code is going to be 6240. 6240. We're going to call it the name Utilities. Utilities going to be the type of account is will be an expense type of account expense type of account code number count number 6240 name utilities let's go ahead and save that so we'll save that what has happened here what's going to happen we're going to decrease the cash count and then the expense of the utilities going up by the 9100 decrease cash increase the expense decreasing net income all right thank you let's have another save and another big blue button on the bottom right i really like clicking that big blue button it's really enjoyable and so then we're going to go back over here and we're going to then highlight this one we're going to be on that last green one this is going to be a supplies so we're going to go to the supplies let's go back on over here and now we're going to say i'm going to say this comes from office depot office depot for the supplies and then we'll select the drop down. Let's bring this on back to January 30th. Once again, we're looking for the supplies and we'll say this is gonna be one and the amount of uh, 
500. Let's see if we have an office supplies type of account here. So advertising, bank, that's pretty common. Business and license, dues, utilities, professional, payroll, mileage, bad debt, no uh, other expense, no office. Interesting. All right, so we're going to go back up top. I'll keep it in our series here that we've been adding, which was a 6250. Let's make a 6250. Back up top, we'll say code section 6250, basically the account number. This is going to be for office supplies. And then we're going to say the name or the account type is going to be an expense type of account. Expense type of account. So expense account, code, account number 6250, name, office supplies. Then we're going to say save. So we'll save that. What's this going to do? Decrease the cash account, other side going to office supplies. We're not going to assign a class, therefore it's going to be in the unclassified category in our income statement worksheet. All right. Thank you. Can we have another big blue button we get to click down there? We don't get to click that all the time because we've been doing one at a time. So get to enjoy that this presentation. So then we're going to do one more. Now this one's a little bit different uh, here because this has a payable account. So on this side, we're going to be increasing the office supplies, but we haven't paid it. We're entering, in essence, a bill into the system. Same kind of format we would have for a for-profit organization. Instead of cash going down on the credit side, we're increasing the liability. So we're going to enter a bill. So I'm going to go back over here, and I don't need this form because we're entering a bill this time. So let's go back up to the plus button. We want to enter a bill. Now remember, for zero, as well as most accounting software, you know, a bill means to us that we got a bill. We oh, that means that we're going to enter it in the system that we're going to bill somebody. When we that we're entering a bill from somebody. When we have an invoice, that means we're invoicing someone else, or you could think of it billing someone else. So an invoice to us will be a bill to somebody else. A bill to us is an invoice from somebody else. So the bill might say on it invoice because it came from another company. And so it's an invoice, but for us, it's a bill because we're entering it in the bill section. So obviously there's two sides of that transaction. You got to keep in mind which side of the transaction we are and then use the terminology of the software to name whichever side we are on. Bill to us means someone gave us a bill, which could be called invoice to them. All right, so we're going to enter the bill. Bill, and then I'm going to say that it's going to look very similar to what we had before, the prior screen. However, now it's a bill type of form which means that accounts payable is going to go up. So anytime you see bill type form, accounts payable is going to go up. So once again, I'm going to call, I'm going to say office depot, office depot, not post office. And then I'm going to say, this is going to be for the end of January, January 30th. And let's say the due date, we'll say it's February 30th, or there's not, there's 29, there's 29 days in 2020 for February. And then we're gonna go down here, say quantity one, and we're gonna go and say that uh, that's gonna be 4,500 for the amount. Amount four, five, zero, oh, that's a seven. I wanted a five, zero, zero. I think my nails, my nails are getting long, that's a seven. And then I'm gonna say drop down, and the other side of the account is gonna go to that office supplies that we set up. Once again, not using the restricted or unrestricted. What's this going to do when we record it? It's going to be uh, saving. It's going to be increasing the, the accounts payable now. Instead of decreasing cash, the other side going to the office supplies. It's going to be uncategorized for the income worksheet uh, that we will have. So we'll, here we go. Let's hit the big green button this time. So now let's go on up to our report. So we're going to go to the accounting drop down. We're going to go to that uh, balance sheet report. Let's open up the old balance sheet report. Changing the date, we're going to bring this out to 2020. So we're going to bring it out to January 31st, 2020. We're going to update that report. Let's then open up the other report before we start to analyze everything. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to go up top. We're going to right click on the tab, duplicate the tab, put the balance sheet on the right, going back to the tab to the left, open up the income statement then, accounting drop down. Going down to that income statement, open up the income statement. Then we're going to copy this tab or duplicate it. So let's go up to the tab up top, right click on the tab up top and duplicate the tab up top. 
Then we're going to go back to the tab to the left and we'll do this one more time. Go into the accounting drop down and then go to the income statement worksheet. I'm not sure that'll be the last time, but the last time for right now, we'll open up the income statement worksheet. Then let's go over to the balance sheet. Let's analyze what we have thus far. I'm on 125 on the zoom in. So we're zooming in to 125%. Uh, uh, are we? Yeah, there we are. And then I'm going to scroll down and the checking account. Let's check the checking account. Let's give the checking account a check. Scrolling down to the checking account, we have our items here, including the uh, office depot that we spent, the 13, the post office, the uh, office depot again, and then the Verizon and Edison. So there's our transactions there, decreasing the checking account. That looks pretty straightforward. If I go back up top, back to the balance sheet, the other side's going to be on the income statements. So let's go to the income statement tab and scroll on down to the income statement where we see our, our transactions here where we have the rent, the telephone, the utilities, and the salaries and wages. So we have that broken out. And before I forget, let's go back to the balance sheet. Just recall that we had that one transaction which we put in a bill. So the bill resulted down here in this accounts payable transaction. So that means that we're going to owe money in the future. Now we can, of course, track the bills in a similar feature as we would for the accounts receivable to track the bills that are owed and then pay those bills at a future time. So here's going to be the transaction. If we needed to go back into that transaction, we can go into it here and that would uh, take us back into this transaction. Now, one way to pay the bill uh, is to go into the bill and go to the bottom of it where you have the amount pay or the pay amount. And then you can make the payment and record the payment in that way, tying it directly to the actual bill. I'm going to go back to the balance sheet, go back here and then back again. Now, I also want to take a look uh, while I remember here the, the bill feature in our system. So let's go back to the first tab. I'm going to right click on this tab. So we have a, a place that we can look at do stuff other than look at reports. Right click on this tab and duplicate that tab. So now I got the balance sheet, income statement, income statement worksheet, and then we're going to do stuff on this tab to the left. That's why I'm always doing stuff on the left tab. And so then let's take a look at the dashboard. Let's go back on over to our dashboard here. And then if you go down to, to this section where it says bills you need to pay right on the home page, this is one, one area or one way you can, you can get into that information for the, the bills you need to pay. So then in the bills section, you'll see this item here that says awaiting payment. So then we can go into the awaiting payment bill. And this is where you can kind of uh, sort your bills and then make the payment on them. You can make the payment by checking off here if you have multiple bills that you want to pay. And or you can make the payment by going into that bill and then recording the payment on it by then going down to the bottom and recording the pay date and the payment on it. So that's how you'd pay the bill. If I go back then uh, to, the, to the prior tab, once you make the payment, it'll be removed from this screen and it'll go into the paid screen here. So also note that if you go to the contacts, and you wanted to, to track your information. If I go to all, all contacts, then you'll also see that the contacts will be broken out based on if, they, if, you, if you owe them money or if they owe you money uh, by basically customers or vendors then, or they call them suppliers here. So if I go into the suppliers uh, item, so notice I have 12 contacts and, and the suppliers, there's that Office Depot once again. So you can also run reports in a similar fashion with regards to who you owe. So I'm going to go back up to the dashboard here. Let's go into the income statement again. Income statement tab, recalling that we have the expenses as we would normally see them in a for profit recorded by nature. Then if I go to the income statement worksheet over here, uh, note that uh, th there, at the end of the day, we need to pull them over into unrestricted. They're not in unrestricted now because like we said, we're going to do that in a two-step process. So we put them in unrestricted now, making it easy for somebody to just do the data input, do the normal accounting and pay off the expenses. Then we're going to go into all these items. We're going to drill back in from this side and then uh, reallocate these items in accordance with their percentages, allocating them not only to unrestricted, but to the subcategories based on the programs and the admin based on that 20, 20, 20, 40 breakout. So we'll do that in a future presentation. That's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.